everybody. I sincerely apologize. I apparently was extremely uh, over um, estimated my ability to get this done in time, in part because I forgot I was going to have to put new leaders on almost all the Tama. And there's probably going to be some pauses in the conversation because I use the uh, horribly unsanitary method of uh, using my mouth as a third hand for some of these. But all the Tama leaders are cut. That's them over there. I've already got half of them on. And I am going to do my absolute best to try and get this set up and at least a little bit done on it before the end of the hour. Though I might go a bit long if I need to. And I'm probably going to use my phone to read chat because uh, the laptop's a little far away. Though theoretically nobody's on yet, though, as I've learned before, YouTube lies. So I even had uh, my uh, usage, usage statistics say that I had uh, negative users, <laughs> negative number of users on. That was amusing. Now let me bring up the chat on my phone. Okay, there we go. At least I should be able to read easily now. My phone says somebody's on, but that might be reading it as me. So as you can see, I have the uh, inner rails strung up. I'm just getting the outer rails now. Just realized I was going to get that annoying 20 second echo if I didn't uh, quickly turn down the volume on my phone. I hope at least what I'm doing is visible. And in focus, I did set the camera up ahead of time and it looked good, but I know that uh, the live streams are a, slower, a lower resolution than I get um, when I'm using the camera app. Looks like we have at least one person on more than me. Um, welcome. I do apologize. I sincerely overestimated my ability to get this prepped in time, uh, in part because I forgot I was going to have to redo the leaders on most of the Tama. Uh, at least I got all the old clunky leaders off. 
and all the uh, thread cut for the new leaders. That's them right there. And apparently I lost you. Oh well. But I am working as fast as I can. Hopefully without mistakes. At least once I get the uh, skeins unwound, it's not too long to get them tied off on the leader. Well, thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. And again, I am sorry that I'm not actually ready to rock and roll. And I've got 26 out of the 46 Tama. This is going to take up uh, on the Tuck it I already. Since it looks like we've just added somebody, just mentioning that. Uh, I sin sin not sincerely, severely overestimated my ability to get the Takadai set up before the start of the stream. Um, I hope to be able to have it finished being set up. And um, and at least some of the braiding done, or some moves done before the end of the stream. And I'm doing my level best to be able to get to that point. So I do apologize for any pauses in talking. I am keeping an eye on the chat. So if I see questions or comments, I will do my best to answer them right away. Oops. Just forgot I'm already working on the other side. Let's try this again. Helps if I do it on the right side. I'm not going to have that long of a braid for this one, um, mainly because I've got another braid project I want to do fairly soon, and this one isn't an overly complex braid. It's four similar moves done on... Uh, um, each arm uh, where you wind up getting a 3-3 three, three twill. Just 
Sorry, this game doesn't want to unwind very easily. There we go. Since the uh, number of people listed as watching bounces around, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. Um, I don't know if it's the same or different people that are coming on, but basically I seriously uh, overestimated my ability to get this um, Takadai set up before the start of the stream, um, in part because I forgot that I was going to have to uh, redo all the almost all the leaders from the Tama. Um, and I've got all the old leaders off, uh, all the new leader strands cut. And uh, it's over half set up now, which with the extra work on the leaders is probably closer to three quarters. And I hope to have this set up and uh, running before the normal end of the stream so I can at least do some of the moves. Okay. Ready to move on to the next color. I am keeping an eye on the chat, so if you have anything to say, I should see it fairly quickly, and I'll respond as soon as I can. And of course, being somewhat fumble-fingered tonight doesn't help. Trying to get most of this on camera so you can at least see what I'm doing. Don't know if this is the best way to make leaders, but it's one I can do uh, repeatedly and usually without too much difficulty. So I'm tying off the uh, leaders on the Tama about four at a time. Because most of the colors I've got are four of each color. The uh, Other than the black, the first one has five. And the uh, last one has two. That knot did not want to tie. For those that uh, are interested in the 3D printing, apparently the uh, Y-axis stepper motor on my uh, 
Ender 3 Pro managed to die on me. So I had to get a replacement ordered, which arrived today. And I have not installed it. I expect to do that tomorrow. Then uh, run a calibration cube, make sure everything's running properly, and then I'll be able to get back to printing on that one. At this point, I have 18 more skeins of floss to wind on the Tama. With as much adrenaline as I've got going on, I'm glad that I still have the amount of dexterity that I have at the moment. Okay, that is the next color on the list. This pattern is essentially going to be kind of a red rainbow uh, on a black background. There we go. And I'm sorry about the fisheye effect, but uh, apparently that's an artifact of having this uh, fixed focus uh, camera.
I can probably reduce the fisheye effect, but to do that, I would need to get a uh, tripod that would, or the camera would be a lot uh, higher up. which I'm pretty sure I can do. I'll just have to figure out a way to do it. But when it's higher up, um, be uh, much less fisheye of effect. If I reduce it though, you won't see much of this talkative eye at the current height. So Again, sorry about the effect. There's just not much I can do about it at the moment. Especially not when I'm winding Tama. In case you're just joining, I seriously overestimated my ability to get this Takadai set up before the start of the stream. Um, Due in large part to forgetting that I was going to have to uh, redo most of the leaders. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah, it looks reasonably good. There we go. And when this current one I'm making is or uh, unwinding is done. I'll have gotten nine of the 23 upper layer Tama done. which means I'm averaging about three minutes a Tama. And also after this one is done, I will have 14 left to wind. 
So it's at least theoretically possible. I will have this braiding before I end the stream. I will probably be running a little bit late for my normal end time. But I don't have any overtime this week. So I'll have at least one braiding stream this weekend with the Takadai. Uh, don't know if I do if I do, will do it Saturday or Sunday or maybe both. Hopefully we're getting at least a little bit of color in here. All right. And back to tying on leaders. I'm being careful not to make a mess of the ones I've cut. And if you're just dropping in, uh, welcome to the stream. I do apologize. I seriously overestimated my ability to get this done in time. Uh, as I've been saying, due in large part to the fact I forgot, I was going to have to redo all these leaders. i am uh, got the, all the old ones off, and I've got them all cut for the new ones. It's just a matter of tying them off and attaching the skeins. And I currently have 14 out of the 46 Tama that this braid takes to finish getting ready. And I messed that one up. All right, let's try that again. Do it a little bigger. Makes it a little easier to tie it off. And of course, because I'm in a hurry, I'm fumble fingered. But I am not in full on panic mode yet, so that's a good thing. I do seem to be getting a little faster in tying these off, which should help. Hey, Bane. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I am not starting over. Considering I've been working on this for probably three hours prior to starting the stream, I just don't think I can uh, bring myself to do that. But I'm getting close. Um, since I know you're on, I'm assuming you weren't on earlier and didn't hear that uh, apparently my Y-axis extruder motor, not extruder, uh, Y-axis motor on my uh, uh, 3D printer apparently died on me. Uh, if you tried to move it with the uh, manual button in one direction, in the same direction each time, it would move one way, then the other, then back, then the other way. Um, and when I changed the wire to put on another motor, that motor behaved normally. So um, if the problem doesn't follow the wire, it's with the motor. So the replacement one arrived today. But of course, I haven't had any time to get out and install it, run my calibrations. I should be able to do that tomorrow. And if all goes well, and get to go back to printing with it again. 
but that should ex that probably explains why most of my recent prints failed. Yeah, fortunately, I think YouTube has this rewind feature. I've dealt with a lot of 2D printers, too, when I was doing IT work. Sometimes they just didn't work too well, either. Sometimes they work great. And despite being a fan of some of the older HP laser jets, I'm definitely not a fan of their newer products. I tend to like Brother. They seem to have a reasonably decent product for a reasonably decent price that doesn't break down too quickly and isn't a pain to always work with. Okay. This set of four are tied off. Let's get the next set of colors. I think it was the 321s, yep. Okay. Yep, those are the 321s. And at this point, my conversational skills, such as they are, will suffer brief interruptions because I am horribly unsanitary and occasionally use my mouth for a third hand when unwinding these things. Don't worry, I wash the braids before I give them to anybody, so. Oh, uh, Bane, I don't know if you're interested in science fiction or not, but um, just got a new book by Michael Z. Williamson on Audible today. Uh, it was, um, uh, that was now, this is then. It's the sequel to, uh, it's, um, it's a long time until now. Uh, or possibly something like that. Basically, it's a, uh, time travel story the original one the uh main characters were in a military convoy in afghanistan um and uh while they're on a patrol or transport mission i forget which um suddenly there's a big thumping noise the weather looks different the road's no longer there and uh, after a little bit of uh, uh, research, discovery, and whatnot, they find out they're actually about 20,000 years in the past. And uh, apparently it's not them. Other groups of soldiers from different time zones have uh, wound up uh, in their general area. And uh, the story is uh, how they figure out what's going on and what they can do about it, if anything. And... Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and the sequel uh, just came out on Audible uh, like a day or so ago. I've actually met uh, Michael Z. Williamson a couple of times at Penzik. Even got, whoops, ah, rats. Even got a couple of books signed by him. Let's see. I think, yes, good. Let's save that. Put that back.
Anyway, once I finish listening to it, I'll go ahead and uh, make sure to write a review because that's how you thank authors in addition to buying their books. Okay, I think I've seen that series, but I haven't gotten around to getting it yet. I tend to do most of my books as audiobooks these days because I have a uh, crippling reading problem. Once I start reading a book, I almost never stop until I'm done. And uh, it tends to interfere with things like uh, having a job and going to work. So since I like getting paid and being able to pay my bills... I'm very careful what actual physical books I start. But with an audiobook, I'm actually able to stop those fairly reasonably. Um, so that's why I tend to go with those. There we go. Yeah, I read really fast too. Um, like I can do a, a 600 page book in, you know, probably about eight to 10 hours reading time fairly easily. But uh, I'm usually not awake that long without having to actually like, you know, go to work or something along those lines. Um, and uh, I listen to my audiobooks when I'm working. Um, so that's a nice uh, advantage where I can double up on my time. But, yeah, I understand people who can't do it. I have a roommate that every time she tries to listen to audiobooks, they make her nauseous. Reminds her of driving while listening to talk radio when she was a, a kid and just doesn't work out for her. I did have a security job for like three nights. Um, not really sure what I did wrong with them, but it was like in my uh, real early 20s. Uh, one of them was like, you know, walk around, see if anybody's caught, you know, hanging around or anything like that, and then run the uh, card swipe thing on um, the doors about once an hour just so that they would know you were working and not sleeping. I did that after two nights. I said, sorry, we don't want you. You haven't been swiping enough doors. It's like I did what I was asked to at the rate I was asked to. So I had no idea what happened there. Probably offended somebody. Which is real impressive because I think it was, if I remember right, it was just me and the inside guy. And I'd kind of like wave through the door to him like every hour or so.
<laughs> yeah, I could see going off site uh, being an instant firing. Bad enough when they go and hide in the bathroom for a couple hours. Can't really guard a place that way either. Or go off for a cigarette break early on the shift and you don't see them until the next day. But when I was doing IT work at my last job, I actually had the ability where I could, if I wanted to, uh, punch in remotely on the uh, data collection punch-in stations for when you did or didn't get there. Oops. But never did that. Because my guilty conscience would always uh, make me think that if I ever do that, I get to work and they'll have been looking for me for a while and see me walk into the building. It's like, where did you come from? Yeah, that's not usually one of the things that your employer likes to see. So just never did it. Yeah, definitely can understand that. Okay. Four more Tama that I need to put leaders on. And two, three, four, five, six. I got 10 left to do. So not quite as fast as I'd like to, but still. Looks like I'll be able to get it done before I end the stream. Yeah, part of the uh, reason I figured that I might be able to uh, do reasonably well with uh, these braiding streams is uh, watching uh, Nick and Az uh, do their painting streams. Used to paint 40K miniatures, but it's been a long time. And I never really had the budget where I could afford to uh, get all the armies I needed to to be an effective player. But it was fun painting. Thinking about doing it again. I uh, was on the uh, Monster Hunter miniature game Kickstarter, so I'm going to be getting some... Uh, miniatures from that might be fun to paint those see how well i do however i'm not sure who i'm going to wind up playing with my wife is not a very big larry korea fan though she does like the tom stranger books um, 
but she's not really a miniature gamer. She does like Cards Against Humanity, so I might, you know, trade uh, playing games with her. Also, when I started uh, getting into 40K, there weren't a lot of players in the middle of Idaho in like the uh, mid 80s. Though I do remember the local gaming store had uh, White Dwarf Magazine. I've been starting to listen to some of the uh, 40K lore um, videos on YouTube. Kind of get back in where they've uh, taken the franchise. Get an idea what's going on. But since I've got a 3D printer, I'm actually... Uh, Working on printing up an Eldar Titan. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to officially do it. It's an ancient elf Titan. Yep, Larry Korea, and the series is Hard Magic. Um, he's got a sequel uh, planned for it that takes place in the 1950s. I don't think he's gotten too much done on it. Uh, yet he's been getting working on the uh, Son of the Black Sword books. Speaking of which, the fourth one just went to the uh, publisher, I think, about a week ago. But I've been a, a fan of Korea, his works and his political writings uh, since um, uh, probably like 2012. Uh, I remember running across him before uh, the Sad Puppies campaign. Alrighty, next color, one, two, nope, that's, don't know if it is on the focus, but this is color 666. Okay. Looks like we got three people on. In case the newer watchers missed it, I seriously overestimated my ability to get this uh, braid done or set up in time before the stream started, in part because I forgot um, that I was going to have to redo almost all of the Tama leaders. I'm getting pretty close now. Um, after I get this batch of colors, I only have six left. Currently, I have ten left to do now. So I am getting close. There we go.
Okay. Nine left to go. This one has a total of 46 Tama on it. It's uh, kind of small for a Takadai braid, but uh, not too small. I'm mainly doing it because there is a uh, lady who works with the guy who uh, sells my Takadais at uh, Penzik for me. And uh, she was having a little issue, uh, trouble with this braid. So I told her that as soon as I got my Takadai set back up, I would go ahead and uh, do it for her so that she would be able to get a better idea of how to do it herself. Alrighty. For a bit of embarrassment, there was a cat up, cat with me up here earlier. Was insisting on hanging around my feet, and one of the tama accidentally fell off the rail and uh, landed on him. He seems to be just fine. He's got a fair amount of padding, but I felt so bad for him. So I insisted on taking him downstairs where he would be safe. Because apparently I'm very butterfingery tonight. The one I'm planning to do for Nick might be uh, close to 100, Tama. It's going to depend on how high resolution uh, the design has to be to have the scales recognizable as part of his logo. Apparently the chat has crashed on my phone, so after I get this one rolled up, I'll try and reload that because I can't really read it at the laptop range. There we go.
if you uh, look back through my videos and find the uh, red and black one, yeah, I know I have red and black as a theme. Um, That particular pattern was, if I remember right, um, 76 Tama wide, or 76 Tama in the pattern. Um, I think that'd be a little thin for what I was wanting to do with the logo. But if I go much over about 112, I think, roughly in that range, it becomes... Um, I don't have enough of, the, of these on the Takadai to be able to do them. I'd have to make a larger Takadai to fit it all. So we'll sit, have to see how it goes. I screwed up on the knot, which means I have to be very careful in unpicking this. I'm going to wind up stuck with a knot in the uh, um, string that is not going to look good when it hits the braid. Now, it looks like that came undone fairly easily. There we go. I just need to rewind this. Let's make sure this knot is put on properly. There we go. Much better. Okay. And this is the last set of four color, or four of a single color. Might as well grab the last two as long as I'm reaching over there. Put them over here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, my using the Takadai in the name of all my uh, braiding streams, or not Takadai, uh, Kumihimo in the name of all my braiding streams is uh, definitely going to be giving you some uh, search suggestions like that. I may just go ahead and uh, tie all remaining six liters on while I'm doing this so I don't have to change gears again. Yeah, I never really cared for the ASMR stuff. It just didn't do anything for me at all. Though apparently it makes my wife um, actively dislike it.
forget exactly what we were talking about, but I think I did a, if I remember right, I did a uh, imitation of Nick doing his uh, slurping sounds on the microphone. And uh, my wife uh, almost wouldn't talk to me for a little while after that. <laughs> So if I guess I ever need to hide anything from her, I just need to hide it in an ASMR video. She'll never watch it. Actually, speaking of my wife, she's about to head out for work. I'm going to jump uh, down and uh, uh, wish her a safe night. I'll be back on in uh, about two minutes. Okay, I'm back. Wife is on her way to work. You know, next right, I get up and leave, and I drop from three viewers to one. Guess I can tell him it's not the uh, song he plays; it's just getting away from off camera for a minute. Well, apparently, uh, on Rumble, I think he actually gained viewers when he went off. He did the song for a bit. There we go. At least I'm getting close to being done. Though I've gone over an hour now, but there's no reason I have to end now, so I'll keep going. So at least we can have some actual braiding on a braiding stream. Shocker. Except I have to go to work uh, about, be there at about 7 a.m., which means I have to get up about 5.30 or so to get ready because it's about a 40-minute drive for me. Yeah, I do like to uh, read a few web comics and stuff like that to get my brain in gear.
And also, after I'm done with this, I have to finish filling out. Uh, some constable paperwork because I got to drop it back off at the court in the morning or afternoon actually, but get it done before the weekend. At least the eviction that was originally scheduled for tomorrow, I no longer have to do because they moved out. One liter left to do. I think I mentioned uh, before on stream that I'm getting a, a sleep uh, study to see if I have narcolepsy like uh, Nick does, um, which is uh, one of the main reasons I've been wanting to do a braid for him is because uh, when he was identifying the stuff that uh, was his narcolepsy, it's like, man, I've been like that since I was 25. Probably should get that checked out. Maybe I can come home and do something other than have to focus on a computer or something like that for several hours just so I don't fall asleep in the as soon as I get home and then sleep through the night and waste an evening. There we go. My insurance finally approved it. And they're supposed to call and schedule a time, but uh, hopefully they'll do that soon because the follow-up doc, vis doc visit is December 2nd. So I don't have a lot of time to get that in. Yay, last leader is done. Okay. And let's get these on. There's the start. Yeah, my wife had one done. She says it takes forever to get the gel out of your hair. As long as I've got you on uh, the stream, Bane, um, how bad is the uh, fisheye effect? Is it really off-putting or is it just acceptable? Yeah, it sucks going in for a sleep study and you have to keep waking up. Should hopefully at least get a good night's sleep out of it. But theoretically, if you could get a good night's sleep, you wouldn't need the study. There we go. And of course, I knocked one on the floor. Okay, that's good to hear.
I'm pretty sure I can reduce it by uh, raising up the uh, camera a couple feet and uh, reducing the aperture size, but I have to figure out a way to do that. camera is about as high as I can get it on this tripod. I can actually get it a little further off the ground by tilting it up, but then it's going to point away from straight down, which is going to kind of mess up the point of uh, focusing in on the braiding equipment. And only four left to go. Oh, I noticed today that I'm only uh, five subscribers away from 400. <laughs> I'm not sure I could do a 24-hour stream without getting my uh, sleep issues in control, but considering that uh, I noticed uh, Larry Korea was on a uh, YouTube channel that only had a little over 600 subscribers, I realize that I'm actually starting to get into the, hey, I might actually be really famous. Well, not really famous, but, you know, moderately famous someday soon. I'd love to have Larry on for an interview, but I uh, uh, don't really do an interview stream, so wouldn't have an excuse uh, to do that. But uh, seeing uh, him on a stream that or on a channel that small does give me hope. So far, though, I think I've best I've done is four concurrent viewers and maybe about 14 people popping in on an actual live stream. There we go. Found the start.
But one of the reasons why I thought I'd have a chance at having a decent channel size doing this is because, um, as far as I can tell, there's not a lot of uh, Kumihimo content on YouTube. And uh, on the Kumihimo Facebook groups, I see a lot of people asking for help and guidance. And I figured this would be an effective way to get more content about this on YouTube, have fun doing it, and help people. Two left to go. Yay. I'm only about an hour and 20 minutes in, and I'm pretty tired already. Yeah, I'm not expecting to be a major league channel. I'm, I figure if I get a few thousand, I'm going to be very, very lucky. But... Uh, Nick said getting the first 100 is the hardest to do, and when he said that, I was at like about 180. Yeah, I've uh, seen a couple of uh, other English people doing some Kumihimo content, but not a lot and not consistently. And uh, I've been in this uh, hobby long or art hobby, whichever you want to call it, long enough that uh, I've pretty much got an idea and have met most of the, or not necessarily met, but know who they are from online interactions, the uh, movers and shakers in this field. So I haven't been to any of the really big braids conferences. Um, so I may be missing a fair amount of the non online portion of the field, but. Um, I have met the, uh, lady that, uh, kind of got these, uh, um, books published in the English language, ling English language world to get it out there. She's kind of the person who was the major push to get English language resources outside of Japan. There are a lot of there are several others that have done a lot of work in that too, but she's kind of the big name in the field. She was doing a uh, um, talk about uh, some equipment she'd come up with to be able to braid carbon fiber using Kumihimo techniques um, in New York City. So I had a chance to visit and talk with her there, and I just made a knot here. I'm going to have to Sorry, oh distracted by this need to uh hmm Looks like I only half got this around. Well, 
the things this art has definitely gotten me to be able to do is to learn how to untangle knots if they aren't too tight. Okay. There we are, untangled. Let's see if I can do this properly without tangling it. Yeah. Did not give it, wind it up tight enough. Let's try that again, a little more wound up. There we go, that's behaving properly. Or it was. Okay, and the very last one. Hey there. Nice to see you on. Um, let me get the proper name for this. It's good to see you on. Uh, I know it's really early for you. Okay. I am going to be doing... The, uh, and I apologize for mangling this, the uh, Kenokuchi Gumi number one. Oops, that's upside down. Yeah, I seriously mis uh, underestimated the amount of uh, time I need to do used to set this up because I forgot I was going to have to redo all the leaders. I'm planning probably to do either a, for me, early Saturday, early Sunday morning braiding stream on the Takadai. And because I'm lousy with names, uh, I apologize if I mess this up. Uh, Bane, who's been chatting with me uh, most of this stream, uh, is a fan of another YouTuber that we both like, who's uh, kind enough to come and keep me company while I uh, braid and hopefully provide him with some entertainment. And uh, it's Diane, right, um, who uh, lives in Japan, uh, who is also involved with Kumihimo. And uh, from what I remember seeing, she's one of the more skilled people at this art. Uh, has also come by occasionally for the uh, times that I'm not in the middle of the night for her. All right, there we go. Let's put this in. Let's see if this is the way I want to go. Just get a little tension on it. Let me go grab my sword. Oh, 
All right. One's too long, one's too short. So I'm going to start with the short one. If that's frustrating, I'll switch back to the long one. Yep, I'm running really late. It took me much longer than I expected. So let me take a quick look at the pattern, make sure that I'm not messing it up because it's been a while since I've done this one. Okay. All right, so middle up, middle down. Middle down, middle up. Alrighty. Probably gonna have to refer to this a couple of times at least until I get the pattern down. Okay. So, middle up, middle down. Okay, in three, over three, down under the bottom three. Okay, and top, okay. Okay, top rail to bottom rail on the opposite side. So top rail through here to the bottom rail. Yeah, that's gonna take a little bit to settle down. It's probably not the best starting configuration. Okay. And then over three, under three, and over the last three on the top, leave the bottom, and then the bottom goes to the upper rail. Sorry to hear about your back. Hope that it feels better soon. Okay. And over three under the last three. bottom and under second three over the last three and bottom up to the top So over the second triplet, under the last triplet, top to bottom, and over, okay, over then under, under the triplet, 
over the triplet. Uh, once it actually gets set up and going, it's hard to, to turn it around the edges, which is why I want to start it on the right spot. As I'm going, this will uh, join up better. I just need to make sure to carefully do that. Okay, so over three, under three. Under three, over three. Okay. So basically this pattern is on each side, you go into the middle, you go over the second set of three and under the last set of three, Hmm. Ah, that's why that's looking wrong. This one needs to be over that pin. There we go. So over the second set of three on top, counting this way, under the last set of three on the bottom, take the top one, pass it through the shed, over to the bottom on the other side. Second move is you go under the, the second set of three, over the last set of three on top, leave the bottom one out. This passes through the shed and goes to the top on the other rail. And that's the basic two moves, and you just repeat them each side until your braid is done. Okay. That's starting to look a little better. Okay, so over three, under three, yeah, I think I'm going to use the longer one. After this set, I'll switch under three, over three. Get these long enough. There we go. And over three, under three. Gotta be careful there, popping over the pins. Okay, there we go. And so I'm still doing the first move. So over three, under the last three, top, over to the bottom, and under three, over three, and take the last ones from the bottom, and up through the top. And it's time to move the coma forward and change swords. Bring this in a little closer together. Yeah, I'm using too large of a D-ring, but it uh, should work for now. Since this is mainly a demonstration braid rather than something that has a uh, 
practical application where that'll present a problem. Okay. And switching swords. Okay. Over three, under three. And under three, over three. Over three, under three. And under three, over three. Okay. All right, over three. Under three, under three, over three. Once I get all the lower layer ones that started out long enough for the upper rails, this will be a little faster. Okay, over three. Under three, pass through to the bottom. Under three, over three, and pass through to the top. Starting to look good on the pattern. Over three, under three, top passes through the bottom, under three, over three, and bottom passes through the top. Okay, over three, under three, top passes through to the bottom, under, th under the second set of three, over the last set of three, and bottom passes through to the top. And over the second set of three, under the last set of three, top passes through to the bottom. Let me raise that microphone up a little bit so it doesn't uh, make clunky noises. Apologize for any that happened while I was doing that. Okay. And under three, over the last set of three, and bottom through the top. And under, or sorry, over the second set of three, under the last set of three, top passes through to the bottom. And under the second set of three, over the last set of three, and bottom pass passes through to the top. There we go. Let's move this forward a bit. Okay, 
that's starting to look right. So, over second triplet, under last triplet, top through the bottom. Under second triplet, over last triplet, bottom through the top. And over the second triplet, under the last triplet, top through the bottom, under the second triplet, over the last triplet, and bottom through the top. Sorry, let me catch up on chat chat real quick. Okay. Yeah, um, just have to be careful with it. Uh, and again, uh, apparently I didn't uh, get it set up well enough at the beginning. If I spent a little bit more time figuring it out, I probably could have gotten it to be a little more even this part. This is going to be fairly loose, so it really won't matter where the D-ring was, but on some of them it definitely does. So, all right. And over the second triplet, under the last triplet, top through the bottom, under the second triplet, over the last triplet, and bottom through the top. Over the second triplet, under the last triplet, top through the bottom. Under the second triplet, over the last triplet, and bottom through to the top. And over the second triplet, under the last triplet, top through the bottom. Under the second triplet, over the last triplet, and bottom through the top. Okay, and over the second, under the last, top through to the bottom, under the second, over the last, bottom through to the top. Time to move the tom or the coma forward. Okay. Over three, under three, top through the bottom, under three. Over three, bottom through the top. And I believe that's the last of the really short ones that needed to be lengthened out for the upper rail. And now that these have some tension on them. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's right. Of 
forgot that the black are now on the top. Okay. Looks good. Hello. Um, Himayasha, I hope I pronounced that right. Welcome to the stream, and thank you. Yep, I'm just started to get going. Finally got all the uh, Tama wound up and put on properly, and just got everything uh, working approximately how it should, so... I'm probably not going to announce it every single move now that I've kind of got it down, but every so often I'll announce the move so if somebody can watching this, somebody's watching this, they can pick it up from uh, what I'm saying and seeing. Because my goal is to be able to teach people. All right. So basic moves are put your hand in the middle. For the first move, go over the second set of three, counting from U to forward. Go under the last set of three on the bottom. Take the top one, pass it through the shed, and it goes to the bottom rail. And for the second move, you go under the second set of three from the middle, then over the top of the last set of three, leaving the last one on the bottom untouched. That one passes through the shed and goes to the top. Same thing for the other side. Through the middle, over the second set of three, under the last set of three in the bottom, take the top end one, pass it through the shed to the bottom rail on the other side, and then go under from the middle under the second set of three, over the top of the last set of three, leave the last bottom one alone, pick it up, pass it through the shed to the top rail on the other side. Okay. Just got to make sure not to mess up and do a top one when I need to do the bottom or vice versa. But this should be a fairly quick braid to braid once you've got the moves into kinesthetic memory. Except for the transition from the black to the uh, color rainbow and back again, it's fairly easy to tell if you're making the wrong one of the wrong moves uh, you've grabbed from the wrong layer uh, because it's suddenly got black where you should have color or color where you should have black. Okay. 
No, I'm not seeing any obvious mistakes with the pattern, so I think I'm doing reasonably well. Though I am getting kind of tired, so I'm probably going to have to cut this off fairly soon. I think I'll get back to my starting position and stop there. As I'm getting ready to wrap this up, does anybody have any questions, suggestions, comments, anything I can help with? Hey, congratulations, uh, Himayasha. You'll, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy your uh, Mara die. They are definitely uh, fun to work with, and I consider them a, a, a nice upgrade from the plate. And I'm hoping to have more Taka dies for sale soon, so people who are interested can uh, get one without a long wait. That was the uh, obvious mistake I was mentioning, putting it on the wrong rail. <laughs> okay. And it's time for the coma to slide up. Yeah, that was one of the main reason's why I wanted to start making uh, talk at eyes again uh, was I wanted people not to have to wait for them when they decided to get them. Unfortunately, it's taken me a bit longer to get a proper setup. I got a one machine set up to do it and then it just wasn't accurate enough. So I got a new one and I'm still working on getting it set up properly. But I hope to be uh, uh, having several av uh, available in within a few months, hopefully. 
and I'm going to try and have stock on hand in a website so people can get them. I've got enough wood for like three or four. I just have to make them. Oh, they actually aren't grooves. Uh, let me pick one up. Um, give me just a second here. Let me finish uh, this move so I know where I'm at when I start again. find a good one okay yeah. all right i'm gonna be messing with the focus for a bit here so apologies for going out for a bit all right actually okay yeah it's basically um it's dye uh that has worn off, come off the uh um DMC floss I've been using and left marks on the coma. So, uh, I mean, I could sand and get it off, but uh, it barely applies. It takes a while to build up. So it's just the thing about using cheaper fibers that are not necessarily 100% color fast. Um, so it's not grooves, it's just wear. Yeah, okay. Okay, that has been a complete run through the pattern. I'm back to my starting point. And I think I'm going to call it uh, a night at this point. Let's see if anybody else has any questions. <laughs> nope, uh, it's not grooves down there. I have seen coma where um, they don't have the pins. They just have grooves on it. But I think that's a little too uh, slippery for me and too easy to knock them offline. I have enough trouble with the pins I have where I tend to bounce them. Uh, as I'm moving, uh, creating the shed, sometimes I'll pop one up over a pin. Um, so I'm actually been thinking possibly taller pins, but I think I may just, if I uh, switch over to a, a Takadai with a slightly lower Tori gate, this one's actually fairly tall. It's about eight inches tall. If I dropped it like about two inches, I think that's going to improve that action. Oh. Yeah, this is a uh, six pin one. I've got it in here just as a temporary thing. I have uh, the nine pin out somewhere else. I was using it as an example for something. Um, but uh, when I, uh, I need to make up a full set of six pin ones for me so I can uh, try them. Well, with the CNC setup I've got, it's not 
too difficult. Um, I just need to set up a proper jig for it. Um, and then once that's done, uh, a jig for pressing in the pins, but it's doable. Um, I just don't know if it's been worth the effort though. I'm actually fairly decent at, uh, CNC and, uh, setting up stuff to, uh, to manufacture. It's just been a matter of the uh, time and, uh, as I'll know in a couple of weeks, hopefully, whether or not I actually have narcolepsy, which may have been interfering with a lot of my pr ability to be productive. So I'm hoping that I'll get that under control and be a lot more productive for the stuff I want to do. I do want to thank everybody who's been on tonight. It's been really nice to have everybody here. Had a lot of people uh, pop in and out according to the uh, uh, viewer count. And uh, at least at a couple points, it's been the busiest live stream I've done. So, but I do have to get up in the morning. I will do another braiding stream, uh, definitely Saturday or Sunday morning, uh, and I'll post it in the usual spots. And I may do a Friday afternoon braiding stream for uh, uh, some people said that the Monday night one, or not the Monday, but the nighttime ones locally that I've been doing have been a little late for them. Uh, so trying to uh, make sure that everybody can get in and ask questions and see stuff when they want to, but thank Excuse me. Thank you again, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Happy braiding. Okay.